Integrating your application starts with the TIBCO designer. You'll notice on the top left it looks like many designers. We have a standard project structure. In this case we're going to look at our order, a sample order processing project. You notice we organize our work into various folders and we'll take a look at those in a second. Down below what you'll see is that all the things that we need to do with integration are down here in my various palettes. If I need to integrate with Amdocs CRM, I can click on the Amdocs CRM tab and, and here we see the activities for that. If I need to interface with CICS, I see those. If I'm doing EDI, I have the activities to do, the, to do EDI. And it continues with EJBs. If I need to do FTP or Facebook or uh, file adapters to talk with files or JMS or JDBC or IBM iSeries, and the list goes on and on with applications like Oracle, Salesforce.com, Siebel, Swift, and many other types of activities that we have. So everything that I need to do as far as integrating my applications, I have the palettes and the activities to do down here. When I look at then my actual processes, first thing I'm going to need to do would be to define some connections. So if I'm going to talk to a, a database, I simply drop a database connection into here, I, uh, I have my north winds, and now I define the connectivity information with my database down on the bottom right hand side. Can test my connection, make sure it's working before I start building my actual connect my processes. Whether it be JDBC connections or JMS connections or even TCP connections, whatever the case might be, I define those one time and I can share them across my project's in instances. Now, as I take a look at the actual orchestrations themselves, the first thing that I will typically do are define what I call atomic services. Atomic services is, a, is a, just a standard process that I'm going to use, in this case, to create a purchase order. So when I look at that process itself, it has a start, it has an end, and then what you'll see in the middle are the various activities that it takes, in this case, to create a purchase order. First thing I'm going to do is compute a price, in this case just a simple little uh, calculation. Then I look at I want to log the price out, out to the, the, the product log so I can, can have an entry in there. To do that we use simple XPath on all these different um, links that we're going to define in here. So in this case the, it's a concatenation of the order ID that's coming from my purchase order that's coming in as well as some other information where I, where I computed the price in the previous step. So to build these, uh, these XPath expressions up, it's simply a drag and drop to be able to do that. Then I want to do a checkpoint to save what I've done so far. The next thing I'll do is come in and invoke a web service. And again, we use the, the palette, in this case a SOAP trans or activity, to actually be able to execute this. And when I click on the SOAP over here, uh, act, the palette, I see I have all my different act, activities in here and it's simply drag and drop from the palette onto the canvas to be able to add that to my path and then it's configuration from that point on. In this case to, to invoke the web service I would simply come down and select the web service that I want to invoke which could be retrieved from a registry or anything. Select the, the web service that I want to invoke and what that does then is expose to me the input parameters for the activity. And again, it's simply drag and drop from the left hand side into the input on the right hand side to be able to do that. So, what I end up with as I go through and define this process is simply a way to go and graphically define with a process that I want to create. And from that point on, I'm not writing any code. It's simply configure the properties for the, uh, the mappings that I have and then be able to define this go into the tester and make sure that this is working. Now once I've got my, my service working, then it's simply how do I want to expose this? Because I could actually receive a, an order many different ways. Yeah, I might want to invoke this via a standard HTTP request. It might come in where I, I would need to pull for a file and the fi an XML fi file shows up in a certain location. I parse the XML and then I invoke that same process order that we that we created earlier. I might have a JMS message that gets drops on, dropped onto a queue where I need to wait for that to show up on the queue and then parse it and again call that same process order that we saw earlier. Or maybe it's coming in from an email. So I wait for an email to uh, to come in 
and I pick that up and again I process that same order that we saw earlier. So there's a number of different ways that we can now expose that process that we created for creating a purchase order and put that out and, and be able to process it many ways. So the power of the TIBCO platform is in the ability to be able to integrate with all these different systems, be able to graphically create a process that does what I want it to do, and then expose that process through a number of different ways to be able to interface with the various sources where purchase orders might be coming from. So that's the power of the platform, the ability to graphically design it, to have all these activities to be able to drag and drop and configure and make my people more productive.